Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live from Israel with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, one of the believers, said, Hi, I'd like to know if Jacob has a teaching on the word Zion and if Jacob can explain the word Zion. Is it just a geographical place? Is it Israel or the church? Please explain. I really want to know and understand this mysterious word in the Bible. In the Old Testament, <coughs> we have two possible etymological roots for Zion. One would be related to the term fortress, as in a fortress city or fortified city. And the other is lifted up. And it had an ambiguous meaning in the Old Testament, depending on the context. It first appears in the book of Samuel. It could refer to a fortified city, the fortified city, the original Jebusite city conquered by David. But it could also refer to Harzion, the mountain above it. The fortified city of David, or the city of David as it is today, has the Kidron Valley on one side, the Valley of Hinnom on the south, and the Tyropean Valley on the west, going around it sort of like a U, <coughs> a slanted U. On the north side, however, there is Mount Zion, about 105 feet above the Tyropean Valley on the west. So it depends if it's talking about the city or the mountain, but sometimes it's a composite term meaning both. Now what does it mean spiritually in the New Testament? Turn with me, if you will, please, to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. Notice it's both the mountain and the city. Now again, one is the idea of being lifted up, and the other is the idea of fortification. The mountain is the lifting up, Mount Zion on the sides of the north, okay, or the elevations of the north. The city of the great king. So the mountain is the lifting up, but the city is the strong city. Its strength is that it's in the shadow of God. Its strength is the fact that it's in the shadow of God towering above it on the north. So you see the compound Old Testament usage, both included in the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. And we continue to read the heavenly Jerusalem and to the myriads of angels. Well, what is this Heavenly Jerusalem, the ultimate meaning. Look with me, please, to the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Now, again, Hebrews is drawing largely from the book of Isaiah. But our concern is the New Testament interpretation of what Zion is and what it means. Revelation, chapter 21, verse 9, says, Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven vials filled of the last seven plagues, came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So now the city is identified as a bride, adorned for her husband. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the holy city. Notice again, you've got the city and the mountain together. Coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, her brilliance was like a very costly stone, a stone of crystal clear jasper. Now the word city in Hebrew is ir, ir, which is not feminine. But here it is referred to as 
feminine and called a bride. It was literal Jerusalem and the Temple Mount above it. Mount Zion, the city of Zion. Okay? Or taken in composite with each other. Two aspects of the same Zion. Isaiah alludes prophetically and typologically to the New Testament meaning repeatedly, even in Isaiah 52. But when we get to the New Testament, we see what it is. It is the ultimate bride of God. Yahweh will not ultimately have two women. Israel, being the wife of Jehovah, the church being the bride of Christ, ultimately they will not be two women. Ultimately, they will not be two. They will be one. They will ultimately be one. And the name will be called Zion. But notice it is not speaking of a woman biologically. It's speaking of a city under the shadow of the great king that's lifted up above her. That is the spiritual meaning of Zion. It is the ultimate, ultimate bride, the wife of the Lamb that is inclusive of both faithful Israel and the faithful church, joined into one ultimate and eternal entity. That is the meaning of Zion in the New Testament. Zion is the name, as it were, of the inclusive bride of Christ. Not just Israel as the bride of Jehovah, not just the church as the bride of Christ, but a corporate bride. Yet, not in the sense of a marital relationship biologically, but where the bride is compared to a city. Now, to understand this, it stands in juxtaposition and contrast to what precedes it. What precedes it is, of course, the bride of the Antichrist, Babylon the Great, the great harlot, the woman on the hills and so forth. Mount Zion and Zion and the city of Zion, that city, that mountain, stands in contrast, in juxtaposition and in opposition to Babylon the Great in Revelation chapters 17 and 18. Just as literal Jerusalem and Mount Zion, the Temple Mount, prefigure the spiritual Zion of the book of Revelation, spoken of in the epistle to the Hebrews. So too, the ancient city of Babylon, and going back to the Tower of Babel, prefigure Babylon the Great. So the Babylonian city, capital of the Babylonian Empire, is a picture of Babylon the Great, while Zion, Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, is a picture of the ultimate final Zion, that is the Bride of the Lamb in the book of Revelation. The two have to be viewed in contrast. Satan attempts to set up his counterfeit bride, his counterfeit city, as it were. Notice in both motifs, both in Revelation 18, speaking of the wicked city, the harlot city, it describes her as a wicked woman. So the faithful city is described as the faithful bride. One of Christ, the other of Antichrist. That is how, in essence, we need to understand Zion. Thank you so much for your question. This is Jacob Pash coming to you from Israel today. God bless you.